The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Power Trading Hour, with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft the chart marsupial, as they say, uh, David White, taking the helm one more time. And we're going to circumnavigate a few charts out here because I am the one true Sharknado. Chartnado, not Sharknado. Chartnado. Many people believe they are the Chartnado. I am the one true. There can only be one Chartnado. Anyway, we've got a interesting market out here. Uh, 1936 on the S&P cash, 1.75 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. And uh, what we did today is go up and uh, test the upper boundaries of uh, the trading range. Uh, 1938 is where it started, and I figured about 1942 is where it was over. They ran it up to 1944.90 already today. Uh, we are back lower and uh, if you like volatility, you've got it in spades, especially if you're an interday trader out here. But uh, uh, I was about ready to, my finger, my mouse finger was getting awful itchy. I was about ready to start uh, saying, okay, I'm going to take my short positions off. And when I, we got to about 1941, 1942 on the S&P cash, the volume was trading in what should be millions and millions uh, every minute in hundreds of thousands. And they jacked the price up a point or two on the S&P cash. A little volume would come in, and then a whole bunch of volume would come back in, and it would drop a point. And you could see they were doling out uh, shares uh, just as quickly as the market would accept them, and sometimes they just went a little bit over. So uh, should be a very, very good resistance above this 1938 level. And, and I guess you can take it as far as 1945. Uh, I still believe that we are in a trading range of that 1938 down to probably about 1875. And a failure up here would probably take us back down to the 1905 level fairly quickly over the next few days. Uh, they may try to keep this thing up, at least going sideways here for a while. But my guess is that uh, we had our, uh, eh, let's run it up the flagpole and see how many people are going to bite uh, and salute that flag this morning. And uh, now that we're just up five points, uh, not a big deal. Uh, but uh, the volume was going to be way, way short. We needed about probably about 3.5 billion shares uh, for the day. And again, uh, this thing started to fall down with uh, 1.5, 1.6 billion shares. I think everybody figured the energy wasn't there to take us higher. Uh, and uh, it'll be a very interesting closeout here, but I suspect uh, we're back down to that 1905 level uh, and uh, test that in the next couple of days. And maybe... Uh, if uh, we get a big event, maybe we'll see that lower range. But my guess is they're going to try to hold it up uh, into expiration somewhere around uh, 1910 to 1920 on the S&P cash. But uh, things could change. Your, your mileage may vary, as they like to say in the automotive business. But uh, we are in the stock market. And uh, eh, things can change in a New York second. New York minute, which is actually a second, right? On this day in 1928, Herbert Hoover declares, We in America today are nearer to the final triumph over poverty than ever before in the history of any land. The poorhouse is vanishing from among us. We shall soon, with the help of God, be in sight of the day when poverty will be banished from the nation. Unfortunately, just over one year later, the Great Depression arrives, proving Hoover tragically wrong. And uh, I think the problem is... Not poverty, but stupidity, because so many people believe in things uh, that don't do them justice. 
they like to uh, yell at the man, riot. Uh, I think they'd be better off getting college degrees, even if it was a local college that was cheap. Uh, then going out and rioting. I haven't seen rioting really change anything, at least in the United States. Yeah, but it gives uh, something uh, for everybody to uh, be intently focused on when elections are coming near. But uh, yeah, things really don't change ever, do they? But uh, eh, historically and critically and uh, epically wrong this day in 1928 uh, on the end of poverty. Uh, other things going on uh, out there where I can kind of the move out here today makes me think that we're still being violently opposed in the uh, top of a market. And uh, still not to that uh, it's being accepted as self-evident phase in the market. Um, probably one of the biggest things I thought was interesting that happened uh, later on Friday, we didn't t talk much about individual things affecting companies, but uh, and still, uh, it I don't think it's going to affect any one company for the stock prices, but I do think that it gives you a much better uh, view into Silicon Valley where everybody tells you that uh, everybody's paid extremely well. Uh, Judge Ko, who's also handling the Samsung Apple uh, issues uh, with uh, patents, uh, mentioned there was substantial evidence of a major role played by Steve Jobs and others in Silicon Valley and the emails between the high-level executives like Jobs and others for planning to screw uh, the em engineers out of huge amounts of cash by not offering each other one's jobs and finding a market level uh, that was uh, a free market level, let me put it that way. Um, and uh, this, uh, I think we're going to find a lot more uh, going on out here. The original deal was for $350 million, and the lawyers kind of rolled over. Uh, Judge Cole basically lambasted them for taking a fairly uh, cheap road and said, you're going to court, I'm not accepting this uh, deal. And uh, the cake, basically what they're fighting over is about $9 billion overall in Silicon Valley that would have gone to engineers, uh, that they estimate would have gone to engineers if there was a free market and uh, companies could hire at will, whether you were at another company or at the company you were at. But uh, Steve Jobs are rather instrumental. Some of those emails have leaked uh, because of decorum, which I have little of. Uh, so you can tell how what uh, level the limbo bar is set on this issue. Uh, I cannot repeat uh, the things that uh, well, uh, Mr. Steve Jobs said. But uh, nonetheless, he thought of his employees as slaves. And uh, the emails pretty much prove that. And uh, I took a lot of heat when uh, he died. And I said, uh, he's not a very good or uh, wonderful human being. Um, there were too many reports over too many years uh, about all the things that he'd done in the past. I'd bumped into too many people that had worked around him. And uh, I think uh, the best thing would be for those emails to come out and get a, a truer picture. Uh, just because somebody's successful doesn't make them a wonderful human being. And, uh, you know, even now we're just finding out things about Edison, about uh, what a miserable son of a gun that guy was. Uh, but uh, I think if you're going to have a full picture, uh, you need to have all the information. I think those uh, emails are going to be very enlightening. But at the same time, uh, these guys may have to cough up a great deal more money uh, than $350 million among them. But uh, this is Intel, Apple, Microsoft, uh, and uh, Oracle, and uh, some of the others. So um, maybe a little bit bigger. Like I said, I don't think it's going to affect uh, the stock price as much as it's going to affect uh, maybe the PR and the uh, belief about how these guys treat their employees. So anyway, as we uh, come out here, uh, continuing to see weakness in the market, we'll be uh, giving a blow by blow out here. Uh, but uh, we've just ducked back in under that uh, 1938 on the S&P cash, uh, getting to 1.8 billion shares on the New York Consolidated Tape. But uh, just under uh, 1937 as we speak, and it's going to be very interesting to see how this market closes down. My guess is that we close flat on the day. That would be just about right, and uh, 
probably looking at 1920 for a Friday close, uh, looking at the data right now. Um, other things of interest out here, I wanted to get to a few things, uh, and uh, I don't think I've got uh, any of these uh, things looked up. Uh, we had been talking about uh, solar stocks last week and the week before, uh, and uh, we've got a real cheerleader um, in the uh, uh, den for solar power because he got solar power. And, of course, with a lot of subsidies, uh, his neighbors and the people of the state and the country are paying for his solar power, which is less expensive, and uh, all power to you. I'm not saying he shouldn't do it. What I am saying is that there's no long-term future for solar power until it can truly compete with uh, either coal or natural gas. What's that? Let's put the bar a little higher, natural gas. Part of the issue with that is that... Um, those solar power, well, especially in the winter, maybe well, maybe you get six hours of power out of these things. And, of course, if the clouds come over, you don't get near the power. So you always have to have a uh, power supply like a uh, coal or uh, natural gas power supply. And the problem ends up being that you always have to have that because these things, windmills, uh, all the other stuff, do not work 24 hours a day. So you you got to have that duplicate capacity. Uh, always is standing by in the background. So uh, the cost of solar power, a great deal higher uh, because you're basically doubling up uh, until solar power can be stored economically. And we've talked about that and the companies involved in it. Uh, probably still not happening. Anyway, if you want to look more about that, I had some emails about it. It's the Brooklyn, oh, so not the Brooklyn, hang a second. It is the uh, uh, Brookings Institute study, and uh, they go through it. And, of course, a lot of people uh, talking about uh, them cherry-picking the data on it, and I imagine they are. But the question is, as long I guess the tenet and the thesis of their work is, as long as you have to build another power supply uh, and power station, uh, why build the solar one? And I think it's a pretty good idea. Uh, you're basically saying we can do that, and uh, maybe you save a little bit of carbon. But uh, their uh, their ideas are uh, fairly tough. Anyway, uh, a few other things uh, going on out here. I just got to find them where they're at. I can't remember where I put them in my stuff. Um. Uh, and what do we got? Just a few seconds left here. Uh, Comcast employee admits company will not issue refunds only if the customers record your conversations and then you are able to play them back. So uh, remember, we were talking about that a week or 10 days ago with Comcast uh, customer support not allowing anybody to cancel. But uh, interesting uh, for Comcast, but one of the reasons why I dislike all those ISPs. We'll be back in just a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. This red light, green light market profile system dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. 
For all the details and to find out how the signal box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you are under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Dave, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And as we come back, uh, going to look uh, at uh, forward to earnings. Uh, maybe after the uh, break, I get a little bit of a chance. And... Uh, Eh, we'll see how things go. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to look at some of the stocks that I've been uh, watching out here. Wanted to see how some of these things are working. And uh, the one that, to me uh, that I wanted to see how it worked was Allergen. Uh, one of the reasons why is uh, this thing had a nice gap. That gap's been acting as support. The gap started on April 22nd out here with uh, 32 and a half million shares. Um, and uh, that's a lot. That's pretty big volume day. You've got some light volume out here, um, but uh, eh, even this one's starting to roll a little bit today. Uh, and uh, you got to kind of keep an eye out on it. Uh, but uh, eh, a little bit lighter out here, but uh, eh, not higher. And uh, what do we have on here? Arcos Doros Holdings. Isn't this the uh, South American McDonald's? I think this is, isn't it? Uh, profile, come on. Huh. No profile. Maybe it's not. Anyway, nothing underneath it on what these guys do. Anyway, kind of interesting lows coming out in this one. I'll have to uh, check it out again. Anyway, uh, very interesting lows coming out on this. February 3rd, uh, it hit $8.30 with 2.2 million shares. Uh, dipped below $0.04 cents, uh, lower uh, for that uh, previous low on May 7th, 1.1 million shares. Now coming back into that area with uh, about that kind of volume yet again today. Uh, yeah, okay, this is the McDonald's version, South American McDonald's version. And uh, this thing looks like it's kind of hitting these lows. Doesn't like to 
bust that uh, February 3rd low, even though it's uh, a little lower. Um, and, of course, you'd need a close back above $8.30 to consider playing it. Uh, other stocks um, possibly making a low out here is Arcule. Sounds like uh, uh, Hercule Perot, a bad uh, detective show on PBS. Um, now, this one, a little lower, uh, is a, a clinical stage biotech company. And uh, this thing looks like it's in the lower range, but had a huge volume day down here at a buck twenty nine. That goes back to uh, May twenty eighth, and uh, we're back into it. But why? But very very light volume out here. So uh, this thing looks very interesting. I'm gonna have to take a little bit bigger look at this another day. Uh, some of the other ones out here, eh, not much happening on this one. And. I was been watching this one, this Baltic Trading Limited. Uh, I know everybody, especially around uh, TFNN, looks a lot at these uh, uh, Baltic shipping companies. I'm pretty sure this is uh, one of these also. Uh, but, uh, you know, nice volume low back here at $4.36 on October 31st. Uh, 1.6 million shares got into it, spiked into it, and uh, that's all she wrote. Got down there, uh, didn't even, it's still about five cents lower. So there's a chance, but this doesn't look all that bad out here. Um, yeah, it's a shipping business, dry bulk sh uh, shippers, spot uh, market worldwide. And uh, yeah, I'd still like this thing to test 436, but um, as long as the volume comes back in lighter out here, it will be interesting. Uh, basic Energy Services, a BAS, another one I'm kind of watching. 2.3 million shares in the last low in May 15th. Uh, $23.91. It's gone below it. It's cl now closed back into this trading range. And, uh, you know, you got a fairly decent trading range. Got a gap down with some volume out here. But uh, this could make it back up to the $27 level. I was just looking like a lot of these stocks, uh, when they did pop out here, you had, went with a lighter volume and pop back in the trading range. Uh, were they getting any love? Were they getting any volume? And uh, a little tough to see out here. Another one out here that looks like a, oh, looks like, I think I got a mouse, a mice problem. Um, this low volume uh, test of the April 29th low on CoreLogic, another one that spiked down on heavy volume on April 29th, down to 4.3 million shares. It has gone below that low. It is closing back above it, albeit uh, fairly light. Some of these uh, wouldn't be some bad trades, but almost all these have some decent gap downs in them. And uh, that kind of limits what you've got. This one would be about 2870 back into the gap. And uh, of course, as soon as you start running into that candle on the 24th, you start running into resistance. Anyway, we'll be back in a minute and look and see how the NASDAQ and the S&P are treating us. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. 
Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we got uh, starting to see a, little, a few more uh, stocks out here. They're going to report after the bell. And maybe we'll get to them in the last segment or maybe in this segment. Um, but uh, Oh, I was back in our test. We looked through a few of these. Uh, uh, basic energy. This one was kind of interesting. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, got kind of a slightly lower volume high and a slightly lower volume low, actually. Much better better low out here for low volume august 1st 1 1.5 million shares uh to the may 15th low with 2.3 million shares uh but a bigger trading range out here so maybe we that's uh, what we're going to have in the uh, broad markets uh let me get back to my original one got a bunch of stuff going on out here and uh eh, trading at it uh, 1937 On the S and P cash. Uh, let's see what else do we have out here. Uh, Core Logic. We talked about that one. That one's very interesting out here. But you'd like to see some kind of. You want to get some love off these lows, and uh, that's part of what I look at. Is if this market's going to take off, are we getting any love on these stocks with low volume out here? Anybody really deciding to jump all over these? And why they popped? Um, not a lot of volume. A lot of these retailers look like that they've hit a bottom. And I was thinking, well, you know, they've tested these lows with light volume. Now, the question is whether there's going to be any follow through. Uh, Dick's Sporting Goods is a good example. DKS on the May 28th low, $42.33. It went a buck below that and uh, has closed back above it. And uh, the best they could get uh, within a half percent of the low was 3.2 million shares. So, uh, pretty good. You can make a pretty good. 
bed out of it. But uh, here's where my power law vector indicator comes into it. Uh, 2.1 on the, from the May 28th low, and on the way down from the May or from the June 3rd high, 2.3. So uh, there is a good indication out here that the drying is totally uh, dried up, and uh, more probably more evidence that this thing could be in a lower trading range than uh, making a long-term low. Um, question: Do you think uh, IBB will fill the gap? But, yep, I think we're gonna we're gonna have a giant surprise this week if we close below this 1938 level on the S and P cash. I think uh, there's uh, it's at least the option market makers are still staying way out of the fray, which tells me that uh, they don't know what to expect, or they do and they don't want to be anywhere involved in it. Uh, another one out here is a frontline FRO. Frontline is uh, trying to get out here and test this two dollars and three cents, and let's get the uh, profile on this. It is kind of a penny stock. Um, tankers and oil and bulk carriers. Why I'm so interested in this one, even if it is a penny stock. But uh, a good test of the bottom, and again, we want to see a volume coming in. This thing uh, come into a gap that's existed since. Uh, November 1st of 2013, that gap happened with uh, 2.4 million shares. So this little gap has been acting as support. First time it came into it was May 30th, $2.22, 1.7 million shares. And then, of course, uh, Friday with uh, 680,000 shares. Now, you want to see, uh, you know, maybe some energy coming back into this one. And uh, it may need one more bounce and one more pull back before it gets it. But uh and not a whole lot of volume yet so far. We talked a, a great deal about pot stocks maybe a month ago, and Kramer was uh, pushing these uh, rather hard on CNBC, and this one in particular. Uh, it is the only uh, marijuana stock that actually has a license to deal in it, and of course, uh, they're basically, without doing anything, uh, they said that they were going to try to come up with a replacement for OxyContin and the other highly addictive uh, pain uh, medications out there based on heroin. And, of course, this thing took off like a rocket because it's marijuana and, California, and Colorado and all the buzzwords were being hit out here. Um, but truly still the only one. There's probably 100 uh, scam stocks in the marijuana industry and one of the few sectors that the SEC has actually gone in and publicly said that it would be a problem. Um, this one is probably not in that vein. The question is, uh, can a drug like marijuana replace OxyContin? And uh, I imagine me just having codeine once after an operation um, makes me think that uh, probably not. I think I had some Darvon, too, when I broke my arm. Uh, I remember that being quite nice. Um, but uh, not a bad-looking chart out here if you're looking for a retrace. This one did have a little bit more volume than the last few days as this thing came out. So I would be watching this if you're playing and uh, trading in or day out here. This is one you can't take your eyes off and uh, just put a stop on and go away because uh, it is a fairly violent stock. But uh, when you look at this thing, uh, you know, it could be setting up. Uh, for a nice expansion. And uh, what do we have out here? Uh, get the 63? No, we don't. Let me go ahead and set this one up to show you what I'm looking for, which is this. Uh, uh, that is the A. And this is the B, which is that $111.46 low. And... The C point, which is the uh, uh, low on the 8th of basically Friday. So you got a um, 0.64, right, let's call it a 65% retracement, which is not bad. Uh, I like the way that the volume is setting up on this, and volume is picking up um, today. So one of the ones out here that does look fairly good, of course, you'd want to put your stop in right below this uh $80 level, but you probably had to buy it uh, out here earlier this morning. Uh, maybe you get a retrace back in here, but uh, one of the better looking charts out here in this 
uh, market. This thing gapped up on huge volume on the seven, what is it, June uh, is that right? June seventeenth, and on that date uh, you had three point six million shares. So you've got everything. You got a gap acting as support. You got light volume. You've got a good consolidation with a couple of tests out here. And uh, you know when you only have well, what you have three hundred eighty three thousand shares on Friday. Not a bad setup out here if you want to be in that sector. Uh, but uh, everything looking pretty good on that one. Very few stocks out here look like they've got a decent setup. That is at least one of them. Uh, of course, uh, needed to be acting on that this morning or wait for a little bit of pullback. Get your risk reward a little bit better. Comfort Select Beds. Uh, we've been talking about the housing market for a while. And this one looks like... Uh, it still needs to go out and test um, maybe the lower bounds of this range. Uh, and uh, this thing gapped down with monster heavy volume on October 17th. As fewer houses were sold, people buying fewer new beds to go in them. And uh, we're basically seeing a test of the December 23rd high with 1 million shares with uh, half a million so far today out here. And uh, this thing is kind of retreated out here, which gives me an indication that uh, maybe that bed market uh, is not sleeping soundly as it could. Western Refining, WNR out here. When we look at this, uh, back up to the highs. Now, this one is one that is had a lot of energy back up off the bottom with a high volume low. But you've gotten a big sign of strength out here on the 6th. And uh, this is one that I wouldn't be playing, but I am watching to see uh, which way this thing breaks. But uh, uh, about the same volume at the highs, uh, going to be a very interesting one to watch for a possible breakout. Uh, uh, the miners out here looking at fairly weak if you look at the XME. Uh, this thing has gone today into this uh, April 4th high at $43.42, 2.8 million shares, 1.6 million shares so far today. You're going to end up short, and this thing's probably going to end up closing uh, below that level, so you got to keep an eye on it, uh, and it will be problematic. XON, uh, I don't know what I liked about that one this morning, but I'm going to pass it up. Express One, XPO, don't like that one either. Oh, Yelpy. Yeah. Let's see what this thing is doing out here. And just going sideways. Zion Bank Corporation. This one, uh, kind of interesting, is that volume did pick up uh, compared to the previous slow out here on May 16th, $27.65. 1.7 million shares. And we've gotten into this thing uh, with 3.3 million shares on the 7th. 8th, we had uh, 2.6 million shares. So all this uh, volume is at least breaking through that May 16th low. My guess is that you're going to see uh, some of these breaks out here. Um, but this thing probably wants to get back to that 2679, which is where you really want to see uh, that volume uh, low come in. Uh, little Zynga out here testing its lows again. This thing got smacked down very hard. Huge uh, day on uh, June the 5th. 152 million shares, got into it with it on Friday with 85 million shares, and a little pop out of here. But again, um, you would have liked to have seen a good sign of strength at these bottoms, not just tests of lows. And a good indication that maybe we're more likely to go sideways uh, than go up, if you were even on some of these stocks out here. The other thing I disliked is this thing had a nice little pop from that June 5th low up to the June 27th high. And uh, it was uh, not uh, a lot of energy. The energy actually stronger coming back down to the slow, which would consider and probably talk about maybe another month of consolidation at these lows, uh, although I like the company. Um, so there are a few out here that are we're seeing some green shoots with possibilities, but my guess is that these things are not going to set up until September sometime, and uh, we shall see then. I'm going to look at a few of the stocks from last week uh, when we looked at them uh, on the test, see how some of these things have developed. Allergen, of course, we talked about that one early. Or AMAT, uh, that one looked like a possible ABC, but the energy was way too low, but it was at a sign of a high. Uh, Franco Nevada Corporation, FNV, 
And uh, I'm pretty sure this is another one of these miners out here. Uh, Royalty and Stream Company in the United States, Canada. Uh, company also interests in Platinum Group in the metal, oil, and gas. All these miners have been given some fairly big signals. And uh, this one is one of those that did it. Uh, you had a high on July 10th at $60.45 with 1.1 million shares. Got into it with uh, eh, a little less than half, of, eh, a little more than half than that, 630,000 shares. But it went above it. It's closed below it. It's back into the trading range. And a lot of these miners are set up that way where you could see a pullback down to the, at least in this one, back down to that 5461 level on Franco, Nevada. Uh, front uh, line, we talked about that. Eh, interesting, but want to see some volume, although it looks like volume is picking up. And uh, North Star Realty Finance, uh, without a dog. Uh, what else do we have out here? Owens Corning's Fiberglass. Of course, we talked about how poor the uh, housing market's been the last a few months. And uh, this one at least is coming into slightly lighter volume. Uh, the November 8th low $34.41, 2.4 million shares. And we actually see uh, this go below it. And uh, what do we got to close out here? 34 36 This thing needs to close uh, about another dime higher out here. Um, needs to close above that $34.41 to get back into the trading range. But again, uh, the energy did pick up on this last leg down, which connotes uh, even if it does and cannot bust the bottom out here, instead of having a nice automatic rally, uh, you're going to get consolidation sideways on some of these. And uh, we've got a couple more minutes, so let's take a look at some of the uh, stocks from last week and go back to uh, some of the tests we got in these. We looked at Dix. Let's see how Ebix did. We talked about this one with a low-volume test last week, I think on Wednesday. And I was pointing this out that you could get a nice little bounce. Now, here's volume starting to pick up at least a little bit in this one. And you've got a couple of candles out here that look like a sign of strength. This thing uh, got uh, decimated on uh, June 4th out here to $12.35 with 4.7 million shares. And this thing came into it with uh, uh, and went below it with, uh, what, 460,000 shares. So 10% uh, of it. If I was feeling froggy, uh, feeling rather bullish and just felt like I had to have a position, this would have been a fairly low-risk trade out here. Uh, your stop would have been below uh, $12.12, and uh, eh, not a bad little move out here of about uh, two bucks off the low. Yeah, not almost quite two bucks, but uh, fairly decent trade out here. That's kind of the trades that I look for if we were going to go long. Some of these things do look like they started a little bit of an ABC and the next ABC down, uh, which you'll be looking at for. But uh, even on the fix out there, you've got a pop. Um, anyway, we're going to the break. When we come back, uh, we'll look at a few stocks with uh, reporting after the belt. The next. Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. 
Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, Unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Tom O'Brien, founder and CEO of TFNN, professional trader and educator. Also a special guest on CNBC, analyzing the commodity markets. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And uh, we're out here playing around right at this uh, level where uh, resistance should come in, 19 uh, 38 on the S&P cash, and sometimes these things can be a little fuzzy, but uh, certainly looks to me like we're drifting off uh, to the close. Volume certainly is not picking up. Still less than 2 a billion shares on the day, so uh, maybe just a little bit of market gas, a little Beano, and uh, things will be back to normal. Uh, anyway, uh, some of these uh, stocks uh, coming out after the bell with earnings. Call is one of them. Um, eh, not looking good out here. Um, the energy really has come out of this, so I'm not going to be short it. I wouldn't be short a $12 stock anyway, but um, this uh, did kind of come down with higher volume out here. Vocal Tech Communications symbol is C-A-L-L, -L, but it has busted the last low out here and uh, with a volume with twice as much volume, and it is below the low, so you need to watch out. Um, bad news on this thing, and it's right back down to ten dollars and sixty-seven cents. Uh, what else do we have out here? Aerotech Company. These guys uh, teach cops and military about the use of deadly force. I think if this is the company, and uh, this is another one where the volume really hasn't shrunk, but it has kind of popped up. It's you know three dollars and fifty cents stock, so not all that exciting out here. Now this is one that I will be looking at playing after the bell. Uh, of course, way too fast to ever do in a newsletter. But I like this one right here. Uh, it's called Millennial Media, MM. And, of course, you'd want to be long this thing if uh, they have a nice upside surprise. 
Uh, down on heavy volume, two dollars and ninety cents on May eighth. Eleven million shares uh, in with half uh, on Friday and uh, fairly light volume today. Uh, One point nine million shares. So uh, an interesting stock out here. Uh, and see, uh, advertising solutions. Uh, Advertises developers in the United States and internationally operates a uh, data platform. We got pop ups everywhere. Um, multi dimensional view of individual consumer profiles. Basically, they dig it deep into your data and uh, do a colonoscopy about it and uh, tell you what's up or down uh, with your customers so that you can directly market to them. Anyway, this one's down here with fairly light volume. I'd be watching this one after the hours as the pack. Uh, the one that I'm going to look at uh, in a broader context is Rackspace. These guys, of course, have just been beat up uh, at no end with the price wars between Microsoft and Google and uh, Amazon, all these other guys. Uh, this thing gapped up with high volume on, the, on May 16th. It's come back and filled that volume or that gap that really doesn't exist anymore, but uh, not giving you a lot of clues. Uh, bad news, this thing goes to $26.18. Um, good news, and you've got a gap at 34 and a move up here to test of the previous high at 38.45. It's very hard for me to see that the price, you know, be, with uh, uh, Amazon and Google continually round-robbing, uh, cutting costs on cloud-based services, uh, like servers, kind of hard to see how this thing could be good, but uh, eh, you know, eventually, I guess those guys will get uh, tired of throwing stuff away. Amazon, maybe not, as long as they can continue their stock prices up. Anyway, there's a few to look at after the bell tonight, and of course, directly after this show, it's Tom O'Brien, uh, the one and only, and he'll call the last hour of this show. But I'm looking. For probably weakness in that you close back uh, to a zero, uh, basically unchanged from Friday's close. Kind of looks like what's setting up. Anyway, uh, see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, channel 14 on Tiger TV. And uh, remember to sell when you can, not when you have to. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.